They say that in order to move forward, you must first leave the past behind. On today's case, Ms. Paisley hopes to do just that when it comes to her fiance, Mr. Coleman. Leave him behind. She says that eight years of his controlling ways and explosive anger have been more than enough for her. Now she's finally ready to move forward and start fresh on her own. Can Mr. Coleman save this relationship and his family? Hmm, let's hear their case. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Starr presiding. Your Honor, this is the case of Paisley versus Coleman. Thank you very much, Ms. Paisley and Mr. Coleman. Ms. Paisley, you say Mr. Coleman's destructive behavior has ruined your relationship. You want to save yourself and your children from any more pain. Yes, Your Honor. And Mr. Coleman, you say no relationship is perfect and that you will do anything to keep your family together. Yes, Your Honor. Let me see how you two, after eight years, have ended up in divorce court. Ms. Paisley, what brings us here? Your Honor, I am done. I'm beyond done with this relationship. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Mm. Derek is controlling. He has anger issues. He's irresponsible. And I have two boys. I don't want them to grow up and, and be like their dad. So you basically say you've invested enough in this relationship to have seen a change, and you're not seeing a change. Yes, Your Honor. And, Mr. Coleman, what say you? Because Miss Paisley seems like she's done it. When a sister says she's done, she's usually done. I, I really believe that the relationship is worth saving. Uh, we have two children involved, and I realized from coming from a, a single-parent household how important it is to have the family setting. And I'm gonna do everything within my power to make sure that our children can have what I lack. So it's interesting because you have two children together, but you actually have two additional children, am I correct? Yes, ma'am. And in these eight years, Ms. Paisley, I have to imagine you've been a stepmom to these children also. Yes, Your Honor. And so this is serious for you to be coming in here saying you're about to break up your family. Yes, Your Honor, definitely. Has the relationship gotten so toxic that you think that's the only solution? Um, yes, Your Honor. At oh. this point, I do. Why don't you take me through how you all met and how we got to this point, Ms. Paisley? We were introduced um, through a mutual friend, and um, I liked him. I thought he was attractive. He was charming. He was intelligent, um, well-spoken. But he told me he didn't do relationships, that he wasn't on the best terms with his, his oldest two children's mother. You know, he, he didn't really see himself being in a relationship. Had you ever been married before? No, I haven't, Your Honor. Um, Mr. Coleman, have you ever been married before? I have. I have, Your Honor. And how long have you been divorced? Uh, we have been separated now for 10 years, I believe, 10, 11 years. What you talking about, Willis? I didn't say separated. I said, when did you get divorced? Ooh. How long have you been divorced? I... Still need to do some proper arrangements, paperwork-wise. Miss Paisley, Mr. Coleman still married? Yes, Your Honor. So, Mr. Coleman, how you ever expect to marry this lady when you still married? Well, honestly, Your Honor, I was planning on doing all the necessary steps in order to eventually marry her. It's just, uh, as time went on, I kind of lost interest. Uh, in the marriage part. Um, so I wasn't, I guess, uh, attending to it like I should have been. So in other words, you're comfortable in the situation where we are right now with the relationship. Because now you're two children in, and she's also stepmother to your other two children. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Paisley, so you've been together eight years, and tell me a little bit about how it got to this point, because something's going on here. Well, we... Uh, in the beginning, it was almost like surreal. It was magical um, when we met. I was in a really low point in my life. I was very depressed. Um, he brought the joy back in my life. He, he helped me remember why life was worth living. And What a um, nice thing to say. First son, second son, everything kind of just hit the fan after our second child. Why do you think it all hit the fan after the second child? Maybe stress, maybe just the pressure. Maybe he lost interest, like he said. I'm not really sure, but everything 
changed. He became controlling. He became very irresponsible with his money. He became not a good example of what I would want my children to see. And a different man than the one that you thought you were getting, am I correct? Absolutely. Mr. Coleman, what happened? Well, Your Honor, I, I stepped in from a damaged place. So my, I did have trust issues prior to coming in the relationship. But I'll... this lady doesn't sound like somebody that's untrustworthy. Did something occur? Um, there's... We've, we've had our, our problems in eight years, as you probably can imagine. Of course, everybody has issues. Your Honor, I, I could step in and let you know kind of what happened. And actually, one day, we were in the grocery store putting groceries in the car and weren't even able to finish that until a tow truck pulled up and asked Derek if, if this was him. And he said yes, and he said, this car is, is going to be repossessed. And I had no clue that he had lost his job, that he wasn't making the payments. He didn't tell me anything. And, I mean, that completely put my family's whole foundation in jeopardy. 100%. Mr. Coleman, what happened with that? I injured my back. I didn't want to tell her that I injured my back because she didn't have to work all the years prior to this. So I didn't want her to worry. And uh, when she worries, it brings the whole energy of everything. So down. help me to understand how the woman that you live with, your fiance, does not know that you injured your back. Well, she knows I injured my back. She didn't know the extent of the pain I was going through to the point to where I lost my job. So how'd you lose your job? What happened? What kind of work were you doing? I do door-to-door -door sales, so a lot of walking. I just literally, with my back the way it was, I just couldn't. One night, we were at his friend's house, and he was inside with the guys, and they were drinking, and I didn't know they were gambling. I had a feeling, just a bad feeling. I asked him to let me hold his wallet because I got my tax refund back. I had planned to buy things for my kids. Please, 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 please don't tell me that he gambled away your tax return. All of it. I mean, I did lose the job. I didn't want her to worry. How long ago was this? I would say four years ago, three years ago. From and you did yeah. not tell Ms. Paisley that you didn't have a job? Well, she knew I, I also do side jobs, mm -hmm. um, so I didn't tell her that I lost the my main overall job. job, but I was continuing to do my side jobs so I could continue to provide. So, Ms. Paisley, now I come back to you. How did it manifest itself once you found out he lost his job? Um, I mean, it was, it was that on top of numerous other things. At that point, it was like a domino effect. Speaking of dominoes, um, one night we were at his friend's house and I was hanging out with the girls. He was inside with the guys and they were drinking and carrying on and I didn't know they were gambling. It was ridiculous because I, I had asked him, I had a feeling, just a bad feeling. I asked him to let me hold his wallet because I had got my tax refund back. I had planned to buy things for my kids, to redecorate their bedroom, to buy a vacuum cleaner for our house, you know buy them clothes, the kind of things that a mother who's responsible for the whole family considers, whereas he doesn't have to think about those kind of things, so he's, he's not really as concerned you're, you're, to where he might just gamble the money away, but i Please I'm... don't tell me that. Please, please, please. Please don't tell me that he gambled away your tax return. All of it. Ooh. How much money are we talking? Um, it was just a state refund. It wasn't my federal, so it was only like four or five hundred dollars. But four or five hundred dollars? Yes, ma'am. Let me tell you that the vice president of the United States, Kamala Harris, makes a point all the time to say that a four or five hundred dollar unexpected hit to a family budget can devastate a family. Because folk just don't have four, five hundred dollars hanging around. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Absolutely. Coleman, what are we talking about? Here? Your Honor, I, I needed a break. I literally, I'm, I'm a stay-at-home dad. You so needed I, a break I, with her I, money? I needed a, I needed with a her break money. at the time. Wait, no, 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 Mr. Coleman, you needed a break with her money, the money that the family needs because you were not able to financially sustain well, the family? You needed that? Well, Your Honor, I normally make a lot more. I get carried away. I, honestly, this particular day, I mean, from all of the staying at home, being with the kids, I have to get them ready, make their meals. I have to literally do everything for my children. It's like mm -hmm. I'm the mother. Mr. This Coleman, day, I got carried away, it's, Your Honor. No, it's like you're the father. That is actually what a father does. I've, I've won thousands of dollars gambling. Okay, but we're not father. talking about that. You right now can't afford to gamble. 
Because you don't have a job, bruh. I understand if you say that you can't do the normal walking, but right now, at-home sales is at a height in the United States of America. They are begging people to take jobs right now. You're a stay-at-home dad. You can work from home. I'm looking at your children. You have a two-year-old and a five-year-old, and there's a seven-year-old girl and a 13-year-old. Other than the two-year-old, everybody in school. So you can work during the day. Your Honor, during the day, I'm, I'm busy. I, let, I do work during the day. I just I'm, don't get compensation for it. I, what are you I, doing? I'm taking care of children. When she comes home, she normally goes to nap, and I guess she's overexhausted from working all day. She's beat understand. down. I can look at you. I can look at Miss Paisley right now. You're beat down. Burn out. Fed up. Tired. Over it. We were hanging out. They were drinking. I asked her to be the driver because I was drinking too much. Why didn't you put your sorry drunk friend in a car? Right. I'm unemployed. Please don't tell me this is like Erica Badu. You better call Tyrone. And he just as sorry as you are. If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Missed a show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. We've got the car repossessed. He's controlling. Wait, wait a minute. On top of this, he's controlling? controlling. What do you mean Super. by controlling? I hear that from people all the time. What do you mean by that? Well, one thing I can say for sure is that he has to know exactly where I am, what I'm doing at all times. Literally, I can't even leave my phone in the car at the grocery store. I submitted evidence where he called me 46 times -uh. when I was in the store about. for literally maybe an hour. Maybe... Let, me, let me see what you're talking about. No, no. Hold on. Derek, 46 times. That was the 46 times was actually just when I was in the grocery store, Your Honor. Your Honor, one thing I realize is uh, Facebook invested a lot of money into their technology. So when it shows that she's active, I assume that the technology is, is correct. No, it just means she hasn't logged out of uh, Facebook. Well, yeah, well, I can tell well, you that right well, now. Well, I know what that Your means. Honor, Your Honor, when you see <laughs> three minutes ago, they were active, and then you see it active again, and then, you know, little time goes by, 10 minutes, they're active, and then they're back not active. I see interaction. I can tell you from, from experience, I have certainly done that. Log in, log out, log in, log out. I've done that many your, times. Your Honor, it was for something important. I was trying to, to locate the baby's diaper rash. She had a really bad rash going on, and she just... How long were, were you away, Miss Paisley? N an hour and 30 minutes tops. Whatever was going on with the baby's booty was not going to change in an hour Absolutely. and 30 minutes. Absolutely. And he's a dad. He can figure it out. There's been so many more instances where he's been controlling, too. One night, we had a friend over, and we were... We were hanging out, you know, having having a good night. They were drinking. I had cooked dinner. And um, basically, when the night got wrapped up, Derek had asked if I could take his best friend home because I wasn't drinking. I had to work the next morning, as usual. And I took his friend home. And the next morning, when I woke up, Derek was playing a recording where he had put a device in the car and recorded the whole ride home and then was mad because we were not talking very nicely about him, but he was drunk and obnoxious. Yeah. And, I mean, anybody probably would have said something about him at that point. Mr. Coleman, why did you put a device in her car? For a couple reasons. One, she is extremely friendly, flirtatious. She doesn't know the, when to cut that off. But not only that reason, I know my friend. He is a friend. He, he might not be the, the most standout person, but he's very... Let's just say, sexually, like that's all he. So discussed. you knew he would hit on her. I, I didn't know, but I wanted to find out, so I did it to, to find out. You did it to. And trap, I found trap out. Trap one or the other. Or both, and to find out that what's going on with both, if I can. And off. let me guess, she did not do anything inappropriate in that car. Um. Your guess would be incorrect. What did she do that was inappropriate? She, the discussions were inappropriate by themselves. The what were the discussions? They were discussing me and uh, in a bad light of how I drink and this and that. And were I'm you loud. drinking? I was. We were so, all So, wait, no lies detected, as the kids like to say. Were they lying or were they being telling the truth? Some of it was true. Some of it was 
a little bit less than true, but either way, it's a lot of it's opinions. It just depends on how you feel. But and, and either way, I find it inappropriate. As I tell people who snoop through other folk phone, be, don't be surprised if you find what you're looking for. That's number one. Number two, you thought that she was going to flirt with this man, because that's how you started out, that she is overly friendly, that moves to the level of flirtation. She clearly wasn't flirting with this man. She may have been complaining because the last thing she needed to do was take another drunk dude home who had been sitting there drinking with her unemployed husband all night long when she got to go to work tomorrow. So I know that's what the content of the complaints were because she was ticked off as a mug that she is out there, but she's trying to be hospitable. And your friend, you thought he might be a little bit of a sleaze bag? Guess what? Why would you want your woman, the mother of your children, to take a sleazy dude home when they got Uber and Lyft and cabs and everything else? Your Honor, I wanted to see if she would go there. And she didn't. That's an invasion of privacy. And he has anger issues, not to mention the anger issues. So after him setting me up, of course, then I have to deal with the anger. And then, you know... Just... Well, what does he have to be angry about, ma'am? I... I don't know. I guess oh. hearing the truth, maybe he doesn't realize how what big of a jerk he is. What did you actually say, Miss Paisley? What just did you say? That I was tired of of his his drama. I was tired of the toxicity. I was tired of trying to cater to somebody who, who obviously doesn't even put in half the energy and effort that I do. But prior I mean, he... prior to this, we were all happy together, drinking together. At I the wasn't house. drinking. Y'all were happily intoxicated. Well, I wait was a minute. Ms. ready Paisley to go to said bed. She was not drinking because, and you knew that because you even asked her to be the designated driver. I asked her to be the driver because I didn't want to drive in my state. So I asked my, or I asked her to take my friend. They make cabs and Ubers and Lyfts. Why didn't you put your sorry drunk friend in a car? Right. I'm unemployed. Speaking of cars. Why didn't he? Please don't tell me this is like uh, uh, Erica Badu, you better call Tyrone, and he just as sorry as you are. Please don't tell me that she got to pay for you and now your homeboy, too. Isn't that what the song say? Yes, ma'am. Every time you always want me to hook somebody up, I got to hook you up, and then I got to hook your homeboy up. Sir, what is going on with you? You got the side wife that you're separated from, so you're not able to offer her marriage. You are not working outside of the home, so you're not bringing any finances into the home. What you bringing to the table other than an appetite? In this case, Your Honor, I, I literally uh, was the table initially. She didn't work for the first five years of our relationship. These last few years have been the first she's worked at, at all. And I have uh, been a stay-at-home dad because of her taking over, but... My child care is an expense that's taken care of. Right. She would not be able to go to work without me watching the children. So it's like, you know, child care is a big thing. Not only that, they, they get their education. They, 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 we go over, we do books. We have, actually have fun Ms. together. Ms. Paisley, Mr. They Mr. Don't Coleman ignore said me. He, he brings that to the table. Is that enough for you, ma'am? Not at all, because if he cared enough to get a job, then A, we'd be able to afford child care and he wouldn't have to stay at the house and I could work it out in the meantime. And B, because that's what any responsible parent is supposed to do Anyways, I do that when I get home. Your Honor, she's too busy for the kids. She does not spend... She comes home and she she ignores the kids almost. It's 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 not a good thing. Because it's, I'm it's, exhausted it's... because I provide for an entire family of four plus my little brother. Wait, 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 wait. What are we talking about, Miss Paisley? I... Your brother is here, actually, as a witness. Right. Next time on Divorce Court. I'm tired, you know? I Your Honor. literally could just lose it at any point in time. I feel like I'm just on the verge of mental breakdown. Did you even see and hear the pain right there? She makes me feel like less of a man, first off. That's because you acted like less of a man. Stop it. I understand that this witness is here and he lives in the house. So you're here on behalf of the defendant? Yes, ma'am. And not in support of your sister? No. I find that very curious. Tell me why. She is very ungrateful. She does not accept everything that he does for her. As his older brother, you know, I feel like you're kind of leading him astray in that sense. I'm a grown man. You're a grown man, obviously, but you know if what... you were that grown, you wouldn't be living in my house. Oh, so... hell. Somebody just called somebody out. I heard it. Made. 
in Georgia.